Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed? Again, this is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen? Amen. If you're miserable, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Amen? Amen. Go home, get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then come out. Stay in your prayer closet till you're dead. <laughs> so that he can resurrect you. <laughs> Glory. Again, I can't express the time and season that we are in. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Everyone say, I am a part of the generation of the Lord's return. Yeah. Sometimes we have a hard time comprehending that. Every prophetic thing is being fulfilled right before our eyes. The feast of the Lord, everything is being unfolded and fulfilled. But of course, if you don't know prophetic scriptures, you're not going to know. You're just to be caught up in the world. In the book of Revelation in chapter 12, hallelujah, hallelujah. Revelation 12. Oh, we are getting ready to end the beginning of birth pangs and enter tribulation. But that's okay. We're not accounted for the wrath. As long as you're right with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Revelation 12, 7, is everybody there? Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. And war broke out in heaven. Where did war break out? In heaven, the unseen realm, the eternal realm. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. How many of y'all know there's a war going on? Amen. Listen. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. If you're not a fighter, you will lose. Amen? That's why people backslide, go the other way, and all kinds of other things, because they don't know how to fight spiritually. They keep calling on the name of Jesus. Jesus keeps putting them in a place to learn, and they keep leaving. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, this is not a religious operation. This is a military operation. Amen? You are called out in the darkness to become a soldier of the Most High God. Because when this is gone, it's it. Once you give up your last breath, you've hit eternity. Hallelujah. <laughs> a joyous day. So they fought. In verse 8, and, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon, dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the what? Devil. The devil and Satan, known as the adversary, who deceives the whole He does what? He deceives the whole world. <laughs> he deceives the whole world. So is the whole world ruled by deception? Yes. Why well, thought? God owns the world. God does own the world. But the ruler of this earth is Satan and his kingdom. Does everybody get it? God owns the world, but the ruler of the earth is Satan and his kingdom. I don't think people really believe that. They think this, they're still in that fairy tale land in the cartoons, the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. So a great dragon... And, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. In verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with them. Does everybody get this? In other words, they were removed from the throne of God. They were removed from the third heaven. They were sentenced into the second heaven. That's where they reign. But they can come to and fro into the first, into this realm. It says, then I heard a voice, and a loud voice, in, uh, saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. That's the Holy Spirit. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Again, deception is the weapon of evil. Does everybody get it? Everyone say Deception is the weapon of evil. That's their purpose. If they can deceive you, they got you. All mankind falls under the rule of deception. 
Deception keeps people in darkness and causes them to serve darkness. And they don't even know until they finally come into the light. They don't know. Go to John chapter 3. There's something within us we call a conscience. That's how God speaks to us sometimes. <laughs> We're not willing to hear anything else. But before you are saved, God is speaking to you through your conscience. So every time you would do something, you would get convicted. Somebody would say, what, do you have a guilty conscience? You betcha. <laughs> Especially when you lied, you cheated, you're, you're out drinking and partying. You may be out drinking and partying and having a good time, but then afterwards it's like, man, you know what? I got a guilty conscience, and I don't know why. Because if you died in that condition, you went to hell. John 3, who you serve when you die is where you go. That's reality. Get you or the angels. John chapter 3, is everybody there? <clears throat> so Jesus came with the truth. He came with the, and left his spirit for us. That's why it's important to get filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 18, it says, he who believes, what's the word believe mean? Follow. So if you say you're a believer and not a follower, God says you're a liar. He who believes in him and is not, con is not condemned. Why? Because he follows. But he who does not believe or doesn't follow is condemned already because he has not believed or followed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In this, the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. That's why when we are in the world doing what we shouldn't be doing, we are night creatures. Man, keep the shades closed. <laughs> but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be what? May be clearly seen that they may be done where? In God. Now, you got to understand something that I want to go back to uh, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes and follows him shall not perish but have eternal life. See, so many people stop following him. They think just because they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they can go out and do whatever they want. Wrong. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn, it, to condemn the world, but that through the world that through him they, they might be what? Right. Saved, rescued. Remember, darkness cannot comprehend light. Darkness cannot comprehend light. Again, believe means to follow. So if a person isn't following, it's because they're in darkness. Darkness blinds a person. But when a person turns to light, they begin to comprehend light. But it's not until you turn to light. And that, of course, takes you to say, forgive me, Lord, for what I'm doing. Because it's going to take cooperation. When you repent, you're washed by the blood. And then the Holy Spirit has access to you. Because the blood always goes before the spirit. The spirit doesn't dwell in unclean places. So to believe is to follow. <laughs> when we're to follow the Holy Spirit, the word, the person of Jesus, the Christ, is light and is truth. Amen? And darkness is deception. So light is truth and darkness is deception. Has everybody got it? Why? Because it keeps a person blinded, doesn't it? So if a person is practicing darkness, he stays in darkness. Until a person begins to practice truth, 
he become, becomes light. Because when a person is dece deceived, he's constantly practicing darkness. But when a person begins to practice the truth, he begins to become part of the light. Everybody got it? So deception brings you into darkness and bondage. Truth brings you into your light and freedom. That's why the word says, and those, the truth will set you free. But the truth doesn't set you free unless you practice it. So you must put it into action. You may know the truth and still go to hell. That's what Jesus said. Many came to me and said, Lord, Lord, I did this, this, and that, and that. And the Lord said, man, I don't know you. You practice lawlessness. Why? Because lawlessness brought a person back into darkness again, into deception. So as that person practices deception, he's practicing a lie. Is everybody okay? Amen. And third John. Oh, hallelujah. We want the truth, right? Amen. We want the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help us, God. <laughs> yeah, now they go into court and lie like crazy. <laughs> People have no, I mean, the hearts are so hard. The, I mean, but God told us there'd be many more impostors, things will get worse. We're seeing sin rise to a level and righteousness rise to a level. Third John, verse 2. Let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper. Anybody want to prosper here? Yeah. Praise God. In all things. Would you like to prosper in all things? And be in good health. Yeah, man. He says, look it. You want to prosper in all things? and you want to be in good health, then your soul must prosper. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your conscience, it must prosper. Your, in other words, it must be converted. Accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior does not convert your soul. It gives you a no spirit. Now you've got to go through the training for your soul to be converted. And so many people do not complete the training. There's a level of training, of conversion. That's why many go out and fall because the soul hasn't been converted yet or reached a level of conversion where they can overcome. Amen. And that's done by training and learning. Now look at this. He says, look, and I want you all to prosper. I pray that you prosper. Is everybody with me? And he says, you're going to prosper in all things as your soul prospers. That's why the word says in Romans 12, I think it's in verse 2, or whatever it is, yeah. That uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. That's what it means. Because your carnal mind can't be renewed. It's impossible. It will always stay carnal. That's why you got a new man. But the new man is this new spirit. So what happens now, we eat of the word... We drink of the Spirit, so we maintain the inner man gets stronger and stronger. Amen? But the old man can never be converted. He can never be saved. That's why you got a new spirit. That's why you are born again. You get a new spirit. But the soul now must be converted. Your mind, your will, your emotions, you must learn. In verse 3, now he says, look at I want to explain to you about prosperity. What is this prosperity? Verse 3, what does it say? I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the what? Truth. Truth. <clears throat> so I want you to know that he's saying, look at your prosperity, you will prosper with truth. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. <clears throat> I have no greater joy than to hear that my children do what? Walk in the truth. This is powerful. So the prospering as the soul prospers, the mind, will, and emotions, and imagination by truth. Amen? This is truth eternal. This is truth eternal. Things of the eternal truth. Not about um, things of the, uh, of the carnal. Amen? 
And, and this is not about prosperity. He's not talking about prosperity of money. He's not talking about prosperity of possessions. He says, as your soul prospers. And that's called truth. It's the amount of truth eternal you practice. This is how you prosper. Everything else is false prosperity. Now, the word says God delights in your prosperity. Why? He delights in how much truth you know, how much truth you practice, how you live truth. If you're living out of truth, if you love truth, he is the truth. Truth is a person. How's your relationship? In other words, God has no problem with us financially prospering. Amen? But when it's not of God, then you got to maintain it. When it's of God, God maintains it. He loves to bless us, doesn't he? There's nothing wrong with prospering. But to prosper physically and not prosper spiritually is the wrong thing. You want to prosper by truth. God's looking to prosper. He delights in your prosperity of how much truth you have, how much truth you know, and how much truth you practice. Does everybody got it? And Psalm 37. Other than that, it's false prosperity. And many have fallen into false prosperity, and that's what we're talking about today. False prosperity. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Do not what? Do not fret. Do not be envious. Don't freak out because of evildoers. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut off or cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You know why he's going to give you the desires of your heart? Because it will be his desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your what? Righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Righteousness as the light. Now remember, truth is light. Amen. Truth is what? Light, and light is truth. So if light is truth, when you practice truth, it produces a fruit called righteousness. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, and do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. So light is truth. When you practice truth, it produces righteousness, allowing light to express himself. In James chapter 3. What does it say? Who is what? Wise and understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Now think about this. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. People lie against the truth. They justify in their minds, in their hearts. They lie against it. They compromise it. Hmm. Because they don't have the wisdom from above. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. It's what? Demonic. It's earthly. For where every envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. 
But the wisdom is from above us first, pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Earthly wisdom brings false prosperity. Earthly wisdom brings false prosperity. In other words, temporary prosperity. Godly wisdom from the eternal realm brings true prosperity associated with righteousness, a fruit of practicing the truth. Is everybody okay? Hmm. Because which is light, truth is light. Wisdom of God will use the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom of the world uses man to keep them from God. Oh, do you get that? This is false prosperity. False prosperity is produced by the wisdom of the world. It's temporary. That's where people rely on their prosperity. But true prosperity comes from, and true wisdom comes from above, where it's the revelations of God. It's the wisdom from God. It's the truth, where you get more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that you're able to use the wisdom of the world to work for you and not the, you serve the wisdom of the world. Amen? You know, one of the things that, look at, now, think about this. I don't know if you remember the story of Solomon when the Lord chose Solomon to be king and Solomon was young. And he went to the Lord. He said, man, you know, I, I, I don't know how to handle these people. How can I rule all these people? He said, please, grant me wisdom, and I don't handle all this. He was asking wisdom from God. And the Lord said, because you've asked wisdom from me and not anything else, not wealth, not long life, nothing else, I'm going to give you the wisdom. And what God do? He prospered more than anyone on the earth. He was the richest man in the world because he asked for wisdom from above. But it was just a matter of time. It wasn't the prosperity that took him out of position. It was the lust. It was the lust that took him out of position. But many people and believers are living in false prosperity. Proverbs 9. Why? Because false prosperity is temporary. The Lord says, build your treasures where? In heaven. But it doesn't mean you got to be poor. Amen? I'll never forget, I heard this priest on TV said, I took a solemn oath to, for, of poverty. I thought, what an idiot. <laughs> the heck, God doesn't want you to be impoverished. He wants you to be a blessing. And bless others and expand the kingdom. Amen? All that religious garble. Remember, this is not about religion. This is about relationship. This is a military operation. That's why he's called the Lord of the hosts. It means he's the commander of the army. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. Everybody there? What does it say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That is reverence, honor, and respect. And the knowledge of the Holy One, or Christ, is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied. By what? Wisdom. And years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of Christ is... Is understanding. Remember, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. And Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, do what? Work out your own salvation with fear 
and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. In other words, work out your salvation. Work it or lose it. With what? Fear and trembling. That's reverence, honor, and respect. That's why David said, I always put the Lord before me. I set the Lord before me. Can you imagine if Jesus was literally physically in front of you? You think you would do some of the things you do? <laughs> There'd be no, <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Heck no. But that's how he, we're supposed to live. He should always be before us. We should set the Lord before us. That's your choice to set him before you. Whatever you do, whatever decision you're making, wherever you're going, you talk to him. There's relationships. That's why the Holy Spirit's here. He is the breath of God. That's why Jesus came and paid the price to leave his presence and his weapons so you can fight. So if we set the Lord before us in all the things that we do, we wouldn't be doing some of the things that we do do. Amen? Those are do-do's. Proverbs 10. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10. Amen. To those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Everything can work to the good, but it's going to take something. Cooperation. That's why he's deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight, and then you'll follow. No fight, no follow. It's F and F. Fight and follow, right? Proverbs 10. Is everybody there yet? I'm getting there. Hey, remember, we're not religious here, right? Praise God. We're to have the joy of the Lord all the time. I'd rather be drunk in the spirit. Nothing worse than a straight Christian. We should all be drunk in the spirit. Joyful. What is the kingdom of God? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's what it's about. That's why he's called the most high. I love it. You get in his presence, you get high. I was an addict for over 20 years. And I'm another addict now. But I'm an addicted to his presence. I love his presence. There's nothing greater than his presence. I can't live without his presence. If I'm not going to have his presence here, take me home. Hallelujah. Verse 1, Proverbs 9. Proverbs. Proverbs. There we're getting there. Proverbs 10, right? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Proverbs 10, verse 1, let's read it. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son or daughter is the grief of his mother or her mother. Treasures of wickedness profit what? Nothing. Now think about this. Treasures of wickedness. It's false prosperity, isn't it? Mm. And it was gained by the wisdom of this world. It's temporary. Because he says right here, the treasures of wickedness profit what? Nothing. But righteousness delivers from what? Yeah. Death. The Lord will not allow righteous soul to famish. But he casts away the desire of the wicked. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in the summer is a wise son. And he who sleeps in the harvest is a son who causes shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Now, wait a minute. How is righteous produced? By practicing the truth. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked, and the memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands. In other words, you're waiting for the next order from God to do, know what to do. But a prating fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known again the treasure of the wicked is false prosperity but blessings are on the righteous who practice truth again it's not just about knowing truth it's practicing it it's a part of your life when you become a believer you should love truth seek truth eat truth live truth and walk truth you look for conviction you look to expose evil. You're not looking at everybody else's garbage. 
You've got enough of your own. Amen? Everybody must work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 2. In verse 1, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to what? Wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. So wisdom and understanding brings what? Discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her like silver. And search for her as for hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. When wisdom enters what? Your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. In other words, you become more thirsty and hungry to want to know him, to eat his word. You become thirstier and hungrier for more of his presence. Discretion will preserve you. In other words, that's discernment. Understanding will keep you, verse 12, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man or woman who speaks perverse things from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of wickedness, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from an immoral man or woman, from a seductress who flatters with their lips, who forsakes the companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of her God, their house leads down to death and their paths to the dead. None who go that way return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful be uprooted. Again, the wisdom from above overcomes the wisdom from below. It, and exposes the wisdom of false prosperity that turns many from heaven to hell. Because they are now saying that their prosperity is what rescues them. Matthew 16. Much false prosperity. Matthew 16. And verse 25. Everybody there? Whoever desires a what? Sables the life of what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man? Profit. What profit is it to a man if he what? Gains the whole world and loses his soul. In other words, that's false prosperity. God is saying, look, you fall into this prosperity. You're going to end up walking away from me. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Those who gain the world means false prosperity. It says they lose their soul because their dependency is on their prosperity. They boast in what they have. 1 Timothy chapter 4.
in verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit, what? Expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of what? Demons. Those are real. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. He said there are going to be many who knew the truth are going to be deceived. Hmm. This is doctrines of demons. This is false prosperity. I, there are so many religions out there and so much stuff going on, it's incredible. Look at, most of them are denying eternal punishment. Most of them deny eternal punishment because there is an eternal punishment. And they deny Jesus as the Christ and deity. They are always in error and they can't receive many. That's why they can't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they're in error. This, this doctrine cheats many people out of eternal life and treasures in heaven and the prosperity from God because they have their own belief system. You know, Satan's doctrine is do as you feel. They're one of the most dangerous people there can be, people who make decisions and how they feel instead of what is truth. I, everyone here knows somebody that they, they always say they're going to do something, but they don't. Because there, some, something happens in them all the time. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll do this. I'll show up right. But you know, man, they, you know, they're, un, they're unstable. Because they're always led by how they feel. They cannot be consistent. And that's an unconverted soul. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 and verse 1. Now, when you see my son, it's, it's also talking to male and female, okay? <laughs> so, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So what? Your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine that is called increase with increase is prosperity to increase takes something it takes sacrifice cooperation and exit from your comfort zone <laughs> has everybody got it i'm going to say it again the prosperity that comes from god takes it's called increase and it takes sacrifice cooperation an exit from your comfort zone. You can't progress unless you're willing to exit your comfort zone. Everything has a voice. Everything has a voice. Lust, money, greed, drugs, alcohol, addiction has a voice. Food has a voice. It's always trying to call you and sway you. But one of the greatest strong voices is money. The Lord says you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve money and God. He says you can't serve two masters. Why? Because the devil will take you out. You can't expect God to rescue you if you're serving two masters. It doesn't work that way. Or else he'd say you can serve two masters and I'll rescue you. Has everybody got it? You cannot serve two masters. That's it. The devil will take you out. But everything has a voice. That, that's why we're hard-pressed, always trying to draw us, 
draw us away, mislead us, keep us from fulfilling the mission God called us to fulfill. Remember, Esau exchanged his birthright for food. Must have been some heavy-duty porridge, I'll tell you. First John chapter 2. Change their birthright to get high for money. They change, they exchange their birthright. And in true reality is they exchange their identity. In fact, people have, some of them haven't even reached their identity yet. If you don't know who you are in Christ, the devil knows too. But if you don't know Christ, and I'm not saying just knowing him by his word, knowing him personally, living a life of experience with him, revelations, events, watching things. No, one of the greatest things is to pray for someone and watch them get healed. Amen? Casting out a devil. It's a great thing. It's fun. Laying hands on the sick, whatever it is, whatever God's asking you to do. He's just wanting his kingdom to be manifested in us and through us, but you got to know him. What did I say to go? First John chapter 2. Thank you. To know him is the greatest thing. And it's not just about knowing him as God. Or even just knowing him as Lord. It's about knowing him as dad. That's what he's looking for. He wants a relationship to where you know that you're his son or daughter and he's your father. Amen? He's my dad. I'm a son. Everything. I have everything. There isn't anything I lack. He fulfills all my needs according to his riches in glory. He does far above all he could ever ask or think. And he comes to bring us life and life abundantly. He is the healer. He's my doctor. He's my everything. Everything. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. But most of all, he's my dad. He's my friend. But there is everything because the voices that call us and try to draw us away, that deceptive thing. You know, you know one of the things I see all the time is it just takes a pain pill. A pain pill. You know, a pain pill is deceptive, isn't it? It doesn't heal you. It deceives you. That one pain pill will cause you to drift and, and lose contact and lose that connection. It begins to drift more and more and more. That's all it takes is one pain pill to cause you to drift. Does everybody get it? And people are on these pain pills and, and antidepressants. And then, of course, they advertise these things on TV with butterflies, you know, and all kinds of stuff. And that's all it is, is deceptive to move a person away. Why? Because if a person is oppressed, it's called a spirit. It's the spirit of oppression. But the world can only offer you medication because they don't know. They want to give you management, but it's really not management. And if you really read the side effects, it's suicide. So they want to kill you. I haven't met anyone that's successful on antidepressants. No one. They, they, they don't get successful until they're off of them. Again, it's just a stinking demon. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. It's called false prosperity. <laughs> you and I are to hate evil, not compromise it and pet it. We're to expose it and depart. Verse 15, what does it say? Do not what? Love the world. Do not what? Love the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God does what? So how are you going to abide forever? The will of God. But the enemy will bring deception, won't he? 
Remember, that's your battle. That's our battle constantly coming against deception. Deception will bring us blindness. It brings us into a bondage and it brings us into a false prosperity. Is everybody okay? 2 Timothy 3. In verse 10. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my what? Doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord did what? Deliver me. Now, was he in position with God? Yeah, that's why God delivered him. It was an alignment. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be completely and thoroughly equipped for every good work. In other words, to know the word is to combat deception and its false prosperity. Without knowing the word, it's very difficult. You have nothing to compare it. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. False prosperity. First Pete chapter five. In verse six, what does it say? Therefore, what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may deceive. First, he must deceive you before he can devour you. It says, resist and steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you are not the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. The process, again, the process continues. The converting of the soul, the process of sacrifice, cooperation, and exit of your comfort zone. You don't gain anything by being comfortable. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to protect this seed that's been empowered and imparted to us by the blood of Jesus so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. Grant each and every one here the, the thirst and hunger and the wisdom to see things all the way through. Breaking every yoke of bondage, healing your people, and freeing us from all association of entanglements and affairs of this world, mindsets and strongholds. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.